over 150 bottles litter each mile of Britain's beaches, according to a report by the Marine Conservation Society. The report shows that plastic bottle litter found on beaches is on the rise, up 4% in the last year alone, cementing its place in the top 10 most frequently found types of litter on beaches. A group of volunteers have gathered at Durdle Door in Lulworth to hold their own beach clean to help tackle the problem. 5.2 trillion pieces of plastic are floating in our oceans and a lot of that are things like one one use plastics like pl plastic bottles, coffee cups, plastic bags, things that really harm our marine environment as well. Oh, this is heavy. It does look heavy. <laughs> when you come and do a little bit, you're not going to be able to find every single microplastic on the beach. But people do actually find a lot of unusual plastics that could be very damaging. Most plastic bottles used for soft drinks and water are made from a type of plastic called PET, which is highly recyclable. According to government-funded campaign group Recycle Now, every year the average UK household uses 480 plastic bottles, but only recycles 270 of them, meaning that nearly half are not being recycled. Durability is what makes plastic so versatile, but it's also what makes it so problematic as a material. A single-use plastic bottle will take 450 years to break down into plastic particles, which themselves will last for hundreds of years in the ocean. Oceanographer Eric van Siebel has shown that due to strong ocean currents, huge amounts of discarded plastic in our oceans end up in six garbage patches around the world, the largest one being in the North Pacific. So a bottle dropped into the sea in Cornwall may well be dragged through the channel towards Scandinavia, or drawn into the Bay of Biscay and the Western North Atlantic. So plastic's having a really negative effect on the ocean. And it's actually quite scary because I don't think most people realize how big an effect it can actually have. So plastic, it's not just the big objects that we think of. And since about 1960 or so, we've actually been washing plastics into our ocean commonly. So it's the obvious stuff that people see, like stuff that you throw out, so plastic bottles or litter when you're having a picnic on the beach that ends up in the water. But then there's also items that go to places like landfill that start to break down and then rainwater comes and they'll actually get washed into our water systems. And then there's all the really scary things that we don't think about. So like the clothes that we wear actually contain little tiny plastic microfibers. When you wash your clothes really simply in a washing machine, little bits of those plastic fibers actually come loose and end up in the water system. They're getting washed out onto our waterways and back into our ocean again. And we're also getting things like really common makeup that we use, things like toothpaste, everyday face wash, shampoo, all of those, some of most of those contain little tiny microplastics. A lot of it is in the form of a micro bead, which is a small plastic item that we use particularly in exfoliators and things like that. And again, when we rinse off and we wash all those things into the waterway, they're ending up in our oceans. All those creatures we have from the tiniest sea plankton to big things like our sea turtles are encountering these plastics on different levels every single day. And what's happening when these animals encounter the plastics, if it's a big object, they can often encounter it or get damaged, they can injure themselves on it, they can get entangled and trapped. But then you also have the animals who come along and see smaller bits of plastic and they actually can't distinguish between the plastic and food. Now, as they eat them, two things can happen. One, they can actually start to choke so it can get caught in their throat or damage their mouths and that can cause injury or even death. But then often they will swallow them and they'll end up making their way down to their stomachs and then two things happen there. Either they can stay in the stomach and not get passed through, which causes blockages. And over time, some animals are known to eat hundreds of pieces, small pieces of plastic in their lifetime, but they end up with so much plastic trapped in their gut. There's actually no room left for any food and they can starve or organs can rupture. That again causes serious health problems or even death. It's a really common problem with seabirds around the coast of the UK as well, actually. And then the other thing that happens is while plastic is in your gut of those animals, it's starting to break down and little pieces of those plastic trace elements are starting to end up in their bloodstream and spread around the animal's tissues. And it's having a knock-on effect going up the food chain. What's really, really frightening is that at the top of that food chain, you often have humans. So it's not just a problem for the animals that we're thinking of who live in the oceans. Actually, now we're starting to see the effect on humans who are ingesting those fish and we depend on the oceans for our food. Now we're starting to look into what the possible health implications could be for humans. We still don't know.
but it's quite frightening to think that we're ingesting plastic when we ingest the fish from the ocean. So what's the solution? The UK government is under growing pressure to introduce a money-back return scheme for plastic bottles in the hopes that it will increase recycling and reduce littering. A deposit return scheme works on the basis of adding a deposit charge of around 10 pence to the cost of plastic drinks bottles, which would then be refunded to customers if they return the used bottles. Education Secretary Michael Gove has said that he wants government to introduce a deposit return scheme as soon as possible, describing it as a great idea. Advocates for the scheme say that it could help increase recycling rates for plastic bottles in Britain, which currently stand at 57% compared to over 90% in countries that already run deposit return schemes such as Germany, Norway and Sweden. However, those against the scheme say that it could undermine local curbside recycling collections, making it uneconomical for local authorities to run. In theory, it's a brilliant idea. I think if you're holding a party or something and you've got a vast amount of plastic bottles to sort of supplement that particular event, then it's a good idea. But on the whole, I think that we need to be looking at stopping it to begin with. Like, so we don't really need plastic bottles. You can have glass bottles or if it is just um, regular drinking water that you're having, then maybe think about changing how you get that in the first place. So having a reusable water bottle, take it into a shop to top it up. It will save you money to begin with. Um, I think the deposit return scheme is a good step forward and it should be there but it should be in conjunction with other things as well. Litter Free Coast and Sea, the campaign to reduce beach litter along the Dorset and East Devon coast, is helping bring the Refill Britain campaign to Dorset. With the Refill Dorset scheme, you can go to any cafes, shops, hotels and businesses that display a Refill Dorset sticker and have your water bottle refilled for free. Refill Dorset started up in Bristol and it's a, um, it's a campaign that basically um, tries to reduce single-use plastic bottles. So we work with businesses and anyone else who wants to get involved who has free tap water and is happy to basically fill someone's reusable water up if they pop in. So say for instance you're out and about in town, such as here, and you have finished your water bottle and you don't necessarily want to have to buy one. So you can pop into one of the stores that has the refill Dorset sign and be confident in the knowledge that they'll top it up for you free of charge. So we hold two big beach cleans every single year and single-use plastic bottles always turn up and it's a really easy thing to avoid. It's one of those things along with plastic bags that if you make a purchase towards a reusable bottle you never have to have a single-use one ever again and obviously you've got not only the environmental impacts of the actual plastic bottle being created in the first place it's also then um, the plastic that will then go out to sea or is considered to be litter and can then break down in the sea and becomes like microplastic sorry and then breaks up and goes into the environment the issue with plastic waste is that it then breaks down so you've got not only sort of the currents which sort of abrase it and break it down you've also got the salt water and then the sunlight as well and once those tinier pieces get into our water system they never actually leave like all the plastic that has ever been created is still here in the world it's never gone away there is no magical place called away um, so we really need to sort of stop it at source that's the easiest and most simple thing that everyone can take away from this um, is that everyone can play a part in it it's not overly difficult we cause this problem and we can quite easily be the solution as well this october arts by the sea festival in bournemouth will be promoting the refill dorset scheme as a part of this year's theme, A Plastic Beach. So the Arts by the Sea Festival is Bournemouth's contemporary festival of art and culture. We've particularly sort of chosen to focus on plastic bottles because that is a, a, it's a massive issue but it's also something that people can really relate to. Um, so we are promoting the refill scheme. So this is refill your water bottle instead of buying a new plastic bottle. So if you're coming to the festival and you want to refill your water bottle, you know where to go rather than buying new plastic bottles. And we've also got, a, um, within our programming, we've got a, a project that's uh, going to have a large installation 
of a plastic bottle, made of plastic bottles, raising awareness of plastics as an issue. Um, throughout the programme we've also got some really interesting installations that are either made of plastics or um, are sort of focusing on raising awareness about the issues with plastics just to try and bring it into people's consciousness a bit more about you know the fact that this is a, a really major issue. And then we've also got um, things like we are we have a showing of a plastic ocean which is a fantastic film that will you know it's quite shocking really um, about plastics in the oceans and the effect on the wildlife and um, that uh, is being shown at the Shelley Theatre and particularly for that performance but we're hoping that venues will take that forward um, we're, we're asking for no single-use plastics you know for venues to actually try and use uh, things that you know not even cups you know things that can be washed up and used again no straws, plastic straws are a nightmare, uh, plastic stirrers, you know, all those things that actually we probably use as a matter of course and that venues probably don't even think about. So we're asking people to think about those and, you know, particularly in conjunction with things like the film, the Plastic Ocean, uh, it's a good way of making people reconsider what they're doing and the effect on the environment. I think uh, the Arts by the Sea is a good opportunity to try and make an event more sustainable and then we can use that as an example for other council-run events. Going forward, a deposit return scheme being implemented in the UK is looking increasingly likely and could help increase recycling and cut down the amount of plastic bottles that litter our coastlines. But it's certainly clear that one of the easiest ways of tackling the issue is to reuse and refill. And with community water schemes such as Refill Dorset growing in popularity all over the country, it's becoming easier to access tap water out and about wherever you are.